My project concerns experience value. Experience value is a new qualitative system that I've designed. Like other systems of value, such as morality or pleasure, experience value is designed to allow us to gauge the worth in objects, events and interactions, but in a new and unique way. It presents fresh perspectives that can help us make decisions and also help us engage in new areas of design potential. In the development of my project, I've tried to manifest my theory into workable systems. In my investigation, I've made an effort to formalise experience value, validate it and bring it into the world. This project challenges modernist design thinking towards protection and security, and instead it promotes the virtues of risk and uncertainty. This is despite the fact that I started the project by heading in the opposite direction. My process throughout this year has led me along a very interesting and unexpected path. I've looked at protection, preventative systems, feeling safe and being safe, placebo protection, the metaphysical nature of value, social and cultural disparities and attitudes towards risk and safety, the morality of personal and collective risks, exposures, and concluded with the experience value. But it all began, rather perversely, with an interest in safety. Originally, I was quite interested in the psychoesthetic characteristics of protections, and I was also curious in my own personality, because I've always erred on the side of caution, and I thought this was an interesting link. But from there, my process led me along a conceptual U-turn. The pivotal moment arrived when I ran blindfolded into a tree. I've been trying to find the value in protection by removing it, but I discovered instead that risks were far more intriguing and had more design potential because they provided us with something that I'd later understand as experience value. Let me explain to you my thesis on experience and experience value. I define experience as the process of consciousness, the way we make sense of our existence. This process is initiated by an event. The event is sensed, then perceived and interpreted. During this stage, feelings and information are yielded from sensory stimuli. We're informed by our senses, vision, hearing, smell, taste and touch. Though, in fact, touch is more of an umbrella term for the dozens of very specific sensations, like feeling pressure, temperature, balance and loads more. So how does experience value, the qualitative system, relate to experience, the process? Well, I coined the term experience value in reference to the potential worth that can be exploited from experiences. The way we yield experience value can be loosely classified into three domains, sensation, knowledge and emotion. It can be further subcategorized, and these are just a few examples. This is a simplified map of our cognitive processes. The sum of our experiences, in synergy with our genetic makeup, define our personality or character, which informs our attitudes, our behaviours, and ultimately, our actions. These actions and the context we find ourselves in establish further events to be experienced, and hence we make use of our capacity for experience to interact with the world. Being a categorical system of value in its own right, experience value exists independently from other qualitative systems. It becomes paradoxical to use morality or pleasure or any other qualitative paradigm to judge the worth of experience value because that becomes an attempt to gauge the value of value itself. In fact, experience value acts perpendicular to and unaffected by all other values, both objective and subjective. It ignores morality and pleasure. Economic theories of utility, demand, exchange and labour are all irrelevant. It also disregards design principles such as function, aesthetics, social responsibility and environmentalism. These systems of value all act in the same sociocultural space, but are quantified autonomously from one another, like vectors along different qualitative planes. The basic crux of the matter is that experience value is self-justifying. Uh, think of knowledge, for example. Um, it's sought after and it's considered important, even though it doesn't have explicit moral or pleasurable value. Um, we like to feel like we've done the right thing and we crave pleasure. But because experience value operates independently from moral and pleasurable systems of value, uh, guilt and embarrassment and discomfort and pain are all as invaluable in experience terms as their positive counterparts. They're equally significant in our development as individuals. I really wanted to create a model for visualising experience and experience value because, as the scientific adage goes, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. I wanted to rationalise and formalise my approach to experience value and also find a method for communicating my ideas, observations and developing strategies. So what I've done is I've designed a graph that explores experience in relation to time. It's based on a hypothetical premise that maybe the intensity of experience is something that can be quantified and that the experience of various events can be plotted relative to one another on a time-based chart. In other words, at time t, x amount of experience was harvested. 
If I were to plot what might be considered an average life onto this graph, then it might look something like this. You can see we have a line here continuously recording experience, and it's generally stable and consistent as day-to-day -day events live through. The subject might engage in a thought-provoking conversation, perhaps try a delicious meal for the first time, or read an emotionally moving novel, and all these stimuli will provide momentary peaks in experience. It doesn't even matter if these are unpleasant experiences because, as I've shown, even an event that results in pain or embarrassment or a loss of material commodity will still yield plenty of experience. This is what makes taking chances such a fantastic delivery system for experience value, and why risks have become so important. Taking risks, regardless of the actual outcome, will still most likely provide a certain wealth of experience value. Experience value can be mapped as the area below the line. This shows that, even as the intensity of experience can increase and decrease, experience value will always accumulate. Life is sometimes compared to a journey. Uh, it can be a bit of a cliché, but it's actually quite a useful analogy here. If the intensity of experience is like the speed of travel, then experience value is the same as the distance covered. Essentially, you can't lose any experience value if your memory is intact and you're alive. The rate of accumulation of experience value is decided by the number and intensity of experience has had. I want to pursue experience and attain experience value uh, because I think it would be a useful way of researching but also for my own personal development. Being a designer, I've already developed my analytical, observational and evaluative skills critical for experience, but by being naturally precautious, I'll have hindered my experience potential to date. So what interventions can I design that will change my careful attitude and help me open up to the chance of sensing, feeling and knowing more? There are two categories of intervention, and I've mentioned them both previously in my research, risk and exposure. As I showed earlier, the experience process begins with sensing an event, which is affected by a combination of actions and context. So to get more experience value, I need to either take bolder actions within uncertain contexts, so in other words, begin taking risks, or find ways to increase my sensitivity to events, i.e. create exposures. I define a risk as the trade of a commodity for an experience and a probability. A risk can turn out for the better or worse, but experience transcends this win or lose conclusion because experience is guaranteed either way. Risks can be classified by the commodity they gamble. There are three kinds of risk. Physiological, the effect on the body and mind. Sociocultural, the effect on interpersonal relationships. And material, the effect on possessions. If you remember the graph from before, I showed you what an average life looks like. Well, what about my life? I want to know how I compare to other people. Am I experienced rich or poor? To gauge my life against other individuals in the subjective arena of risk, I designed a risk quantifier, a way of comparing attitudes and decisions. With it, I can analyse a sample of test subjects and see how people approach risks and opportunities differently and how much they can consequently gain from them. Hopefully, this will reveal clues on how some people are able to get more from an event than others. I used an electrocardiograph and a galvanic skin response kit to gain indicative measurements of emotional stimulation during risks. Coupled with some questioning, I was able to identify two distinct profiles of test subject, risk pursuers and risk evaders. When at one point they had denied the potential for risk, most felt relieved, but critically some felt disappointed. These individuals exhibited a tendency to risk more when given the chance to do so. <laughs> Yeah, and love it. Risks have an objective subjective duality. Uh, each risk has a probability that is concrete and tangible, but these users' attitudes towards the risks are subjective. Uh, for example, I think a lot about how badly risks may go. Uh, so it's been challenging for me, especially at first, to take risks that other people might consider trivial. Uh, but then again, that's important, and it's why I've been motivating myself now. Over the course of the project, I've initiated a number of risks of different classifications and various intensity. Some risks have been large, bespoke gambles, but most were small, repeated, day-to-day -day interventions because ideally I wanted to erode my habitual behaviour patterns and realign my actions to match my new ideology. This process is similar to the psychiatric therapy of graduated exposure used to cure phobias. For me, the most difficult interventions were all sociocultural. Um, but these were also the most interesting, so I endeavoured to do as many as possible. Um, these risks uh, tested my dedication to experience value because it conflicted with my personal set of moral values. For example, I grew a moustache, knowing that my girlfriend has a phobia for them. Then I surprised her with it. She was repulsed and upset, and also annoyed with me for emotionally exploiting her for the sake of this experiment. 
But I didn't stop there. 